Hello, I'm Nate Eaton in the EastIdahoNews.com newsroom. Joining me now via FaceTime is Ben Politis. He is the co-director and producer of a documentary that has just been released called Missing 411. Uh, one of the big stories featured in this documentary is the case of Dior Kuntz, the missing two-year-old toddler who vanished from Idaho Falls nearly two years ago. Ben, tell us a little bit about this, this project that you've been working on. Yeah, sure, and thanks a lot for having me, Nate. Um, so this project started back in 2015 uh, when I kind of took the reins to the Missing 411 book series. We were kind of searching for um, how to tell this story properly, and it ended up being uh, about five different missing kids across multiple decades. And uh, we, we were searching uh, through all the different case files, and then we found a, a very recent case, which was the uh, case of Dior Coons Jr., who had disappeared from the Timber Creek campground. And after kind of going over a lot of the, the uh, investigative work that you had done, we decided that this was a case that definitely needed to be featured in our film, not only because of the mysterious aspects of the disappearance, but also because of the social media outburst that accompanied it. And our goal throughout the entire film was just to uh, get Dior's face out there. Hopefully if he's he's still alive and somebody will see this and, and be able to uh, kind of connect him to that. So you came to Idaho Falls back in, I think it was October of 2015, and you spoke right. you spoke with uh, Vernal, Dior Coons, Dior's father, Jessica Mitchell, Trina, a few other family and friends, law enforcement. Um, what, what was your take as you came and, and you had studied this case and then you actually got to meet all of the, the people involved? It was, we, we kind of went in the preconceived notion of what we thought we were going to find. And I think that expectation was flipped on its head after talking to the family, after going to the campground, after seeing all the pieces um, kind of in their natural habitat, so to speak. And, uh, I think Michael and I, Michael's the co-director, were, were uh, even more perplexed when we left than when we got there. But what our what our goal was from the beginning was to to get video footage of all of these different elements and to kind of take the audience on the same journey we went on. Um, so to add kind of some visual clarity to the case. Before the film was released, there was a lot of speculation that it was going to be conspiratorial and a lot of. Uh, theories and and unproven facts. I've watched the documentary. I didn't see a lot of that. It seemed to just kind of present the story, not a lot of conspiracies thrown in. And then you touched on a few other p cases as well. Tell us about those. Yeah, I mean, definitely our intention was to to present it in as unloaded and as a proscenium way as possible. We didn't really want to uh, to lead the audience in any way. Um, but yeah, some of the other cases we looked at were uh, Bobby Biza disappeared in the 1950s. In, uh, out of, he was uh, in, in a young boys camp right next to Rocky Mountain National Park. And um, we looked at Jared Adadero who disappeared in the 90s out of uh, uh, the Poudre Canyon in northern Colorado. We looked at uh, a boy who disappeared in northern Oregon and another boy who disappeared in Idaho, <coughs> out of Idaho. And, you know, it was it was a tough uh, six month shoot because you, you know you're going to these cases that are, are essentially unexplained. And um, you're talking to family members who are very distraught, who don't have that closure. So to present the fact in that kind of unloaded way was to give the audience the same thing that the family has received and it's all the information without any of the closure. This this video's out. People can order it right now on on your website. Do you plan any sort of follow-up now that, you know, it's been nearly 2 years, Dior is still missing? Any sort of should there be a significant update? Do you do you plan to follow up with another another show? Well, I mean, I've been following what you you've been covering and um, I'm you know, <laughs> I'm just in, intrigued as anybody else as to what's going on. Uh, I know that there's there's been a few updates in terms of uh, uh, Jessica and, and Dior Sr.'s uh, relationship status and certain things like that. And then there was that interesting plot twist with the in, private investigator who came in. Um, I think it would make for an interesting uh, serialized series. Uh, and it's something that we've kind of thrown around. Uh, the missing 411 kind of brand, so to speak, is in the process of 
being turned into some sort of serialized series like that. So um, it's definitely something we are in development on, and I think people will see something sooner than than they they than some people had originally expected, and, and we're excited to, to kind of be able to pursue that further. I spoke with Sheriff Penner uh, just a few days ago, and. He said that, of course, the number one question he's been asked over the past two years is, what do you think happened? And I know as a reporter, I'm asked that probably more than anything. And I'll ask you that if you feel comfortable sharing, having been working on this yourself for the past two years, what do you think happened to him? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, so when I first saw the, the reporting you had done and uh, the kind of pictures of the family, and they kind of are... Uh, a, uh, it, it's easy to pass judgment on them. And being a filmmaker, you try to keep that, that distance and try not to do that. Um, but, you know, in the back of your head, you always were thinking, well, did they have something to do with it? And I think that was something that uh, Steve Penner had said in the movie. And uh, going in there, I was, you know, you, you kind of, it, it's hard because you, you, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but then you, you, you hear what other people have to say and then excuse your opinion and you try to keep that clear point of view. But honestly, I, I can't fathom what happened to that boy because uh, I, I feel like after Dior and Jessica split up, if something had happened, there, there might have been some dirty laundry that were there and nothing happened. Um, Isaac, who had nothing to do with them, said he had no idea what happened. And he would, to me, I think he would be the, he would be the first one to absolve himself if, if there was some wrongdoing by the family. So I don't think it was that. Um, could an animal have gotten him and pulled him away? I think it's possible, sure. Um, but like you, his shoes would have fallen off. There would have been drag marks. There would have been signs of that, and there weren't signs of that. So, I am really baffled as to what happened. Uh, the little Dior. It's 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 one of those enigmatic cases that that will stay with the family for the rest of their lives unless some new evidence comes to light, which is which is what we're all hoping for. Yeah. All right, Ben. Hey, tell us the name of the website where people can order their copy of of Missing Four One One. Yeah, so it's called canammissing.com, and you can order the uh, either the DVD or Blu-ray through there. Um, and yeah, it, and, you know, any contribution will help to to, to further us uh, as storytellers to tell more of these, so that it can um, be out there in the public sphere and people can hear about it. Ben Politis, thank you so much. He is the co-director and producer of Missing 411, a documentary just released uh, talking about the Dior Coons case as well as several other missing people cases across the United States. They've been working on this for nearly two years. Thanks so much for, for talking with us.